What's up, gamers? I'm John, and this is my Level Up News, where I bring you news every weekday. It's the top news I gather from around the web, so you don't have to. Today's Friday, April 12, 2024. Let's get you leveled up with today's news. Arrowhead Game Studios recently released the premium warbound in Helldivers 2 called the Democratic Detonation Warbound, which includes three new weapons, three utilities, and more. However, players on Reddit are expressing frustration, particularly with the BR-14 Adjudicator citing issues with its low ammo capacity and poor recoil. Despite being part of a larger update, players hope for the improvements to make the Adjudicator more effective in-game. Alongside the Adjudicator, the Warbond offers a variety of other content, including armor, cosmetics, and utilities. Warhouse Studios, the developers behind 2018's Kingdom Come Deliverance, will unveil their next game on April 18th. While the details are scarce, speculation suggests it could be a sequel to the successful RPG. Kingdom Come Deliverance gathered praise for its ambitious scope, immersive medieval settings, and authentic approach to gameplay mechanics like swordplay and player choice. Despite its initial bugs and difficulty, the game sold 6 million copies and maintains a dedicated fanbase. With the resurgence of demanding RPGs like Baldur's Gate 3 and Dragon's Dogma 2, a sequel from Warhead Studios would be well received. The announcement will be live streamed on YouTube and Twitch, generating anticipation among fans eager to see what the studio has in store next. The recent Into the Light update for Destiny 2 has sparked a remarkable surge in player numbers on Steam, doubling from around 40 to 50,000 to about 8,000 concurrent players. This update introduces the highly anticipated PvE Horde Mode Onslaught, alongside the return of Covenant Weapons and a revamped version of the Whisper Exotic mission. Concurrently, excitement for the upcoming Destiny 2, the Final Shape expansion set to release on June 4th has added to the momentum. The Final Shape promises innovation gameplay with its prismatic subclass, allowing players to blend different subclass abilities and introduces a new enemy race called the Dread. This surge in player engagement suggests a rejuvenation for Destiny 2, marking a promising turn following the underwhelming reception of the previous expansion, Lightfall. Bethesda has kicked off a week-long Fallout 76 free play event to coincide with the excitement surrounding the current gen update for Fallout 4. Players can enjoy unrestricted access to Fallout 76 on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC until April 19th, with Amazon Prime members eligible to claim the game for free permanently. Additionally, Fallout 76 is discounted up to 80% across all platforms, available for $11 on the PlayStation Store, Xbox Store, and Steam. To add to the festivities, Bethesda has introduced Vault 33 themed gear in the game, including a free jumpsuit and a special survival kit for Game Pass members only. Diablo 4 Season 4 PTR was a hit, prompting discussions about future playtests. Through, Blizzard remains cautious about regular PTRs for every season to maintain surprises. Despite keeping most of Season 4's features hidden, players discovered hints of new content, sparking anticipation for its launch on May 14th. Now, Blizzard focuses on addressing any issues remaining for a smooth release, balancing early feedback benefits with preserving excitement. Renee Gittins of Stumbling Cat released Potions, a curious tale on Steam after a decade of development, only to face overshadowing by EA's re-released Command & Conquer games. Despite initial setbacks and harassments, Potions has found its niche with 90% positive reviews and nearly 12,000 copies sold, exceeding its budget. Gittins, driven by childhood nostalgia, made the game primarily for creative fulfillment rather than profit, aiming for a broad audience, particularly young women. The positive reviews from players, especially girls, validates her efforts, highlighting the importance of diverse representation in gaming. Despite challenges, Gittin plans to balance future game development with her other work, emphasizing smaller indie projects. Ocean's success serves as a testament to the resilience of indie developers and the impact of inclusive game design. And finally, Ascendant Studios, the developers behind the Mortals of Avium, have reportedly forlonged the majority of its staff, adding to previous layoffs. Prolonging in titles and involuntary unpaid leave of absence with the hope of returning later. This development casts unfortunately on the studio's future despite recent updates to Immortals of Avium. The situation was brought to light by industry professionals, indicating potential challenges ahead for the studio. And with that bundle of gaming news, I hope you got enough experience points to level up your gaming knowledge today. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little bell notification so you don't miss any new videos coming out. Mm -hmm.